A lot of people want to learn realistic watercolor painting, but oftentimes the art doesn't pop off the page as they would like. So I'm going to give you the most important tip to get your paintings to look more 3D even when you're in the beginner stages. The first thing you need to be aware of is what makes watercolors pop up the page to a point that they look realistic. Whether you're working with one or two colors or many different colors, there is one thing you should keep in mind and that is to have a wide range of values in your painting. This means you need to have light tones, mid tones and also dark tones in the watercolor. With a wide range of values like these, you will be able to build up contrast in your painting, which will cause your subject to pop up the page. This is an example of what values look like on that one color. We have three versions of it, a light tone, a mid tone, and a dark tone. Now you might be wondering how to create values with watercolor. This has little to do with the number of colors you're using in a painting. You can create proper values and paint realistically with just two colors. This is an example of that where I just used blue and brown. Orange and white gouache were used as highlights, but even without, you can see how the lantern pops off the page. This was the project for one of my Skillshare classes, and you can find the link in the description of the video for more in-depth practice and guidance on that one in particular. Back to today's painting. That one is different from the lantern because I used five colors and white gouache. The colors are yellow, orange, green, brown, and black. Here's a tip for how you can start thinking about colors to make sure and pick them right so that as a consequence, all your paintings look more realistic. In my opinion, all the colors in the watercolor set are not great to serve as light or dark values, except for black and white if you have those. Sure, you can get a painting to look somewhat realistic if you use a combination of those colors, but for a great 3D effect, you need to do something more than just apply them on paper, and that's where beginners miss the mark. By something more, I mean you need to mix those colors to something else. Then how can we create a light value? It's pretty easy. All you need to do is to thin your chosen color with water. Just add more water to your original mix like this and there you've got yourself a light tone that did not exist as such in your watercolor set. It's what I did when I started applying colors in my painting. Notice they appear very light. Now to get a dark tone, you might think all you need to do is add more paint, right? And here's another mistake many people make I find when I look at their paintings. Adding more paint to any mix you have prepared is going to help some, but not much. Sure, the paint will look more opaque and seem a tad darker, but it's not enough. To create great contrast, the color that you pick for shadows needs to be noticeably darker than what it already is. This is why you will need to mix your color with another one, so it comes out way darker. In other words, this time, you're going to use color mixing. This is also important because remember that watercolors always dry lighter than they look like when they're wet. By adding another color to the original one, you're pretty sure to get the new tone you're creating to look really dark. You also want to avoid adding a lot of water to that mix, unless you start adding shadows early on. It's what I did here later in the painting process by adding black to my brown color to make a much darker brown. Notice it's not as runny as before. It shows a lot more on paper than the initial layer of paint did. Now let's talk about color mixing. I know it's confusing for many, and you might be wondering what colors you can add to other colors to make them darker. It depends on what that color is and what your painting overall colors are, on your taste too. But in general, and I'll tell you what works for me, my go-to's are to add any brown or gray or black or even any blue to my chosen color in order to make it darker. Green and purple could work too in certain paintings, I don't use them for shadows personally. To help you decide, I suggest to look at your darkest mid-tone, for me here, brown, and pick the color that you think makes the best shadow and will fit in your painting nicely. Naturally, I picked black but I could also have chosen to use blue or any type of grayish watercolor. 
If I hadn't used any brown as a main color in this painting, I might have considered it to make my midtones dark. If you're not sure what color to pick, you can always swatch all your colors that you want to use in that painting on a separate sheet of paper and then swatch the shadow color mixed with different colors and see which one looks best. You can see you'll get different results each time, they might all be valid. You're the one to pick the one you like best for that specific painting you're working on. Now you have a nice range of values and that you know how to make colors lighter or darker, the next thing you want to do is to start applying them from light to dark. And to do that, you need to work in layers. It's the best way to work from light to dark effectively because there's no rush, it's a methodical approach and between each layer you can assess what to do next and how much shadow to add. You have probably heard this a lot in other videos. Usually you'll hear going from light to dark will prevent you from making mistakes, as this is a general point about using that method, but in fact, it's also very useful in helping you make sure you can take a step back at each stage in the painting and decide what parts might need more shadow. This way, you can start adding those shadows little by little. You can see here how I do that. I keep adding shadows, layer after layer, until contrast is good enough that my trees are starting to look three-dimensional on top of the page. I stop when I'm satisfied with the looks of it. Now let's talk about how to use color in each layer. In the initial layer, you will block in the main colors, and since you're working from light to dark, you will be adding colors that have been thinned with water first. The goal is to just block in colors, we don't need to worry about shadows this early in a painting. My painting already has a few dark tones in the first layer because it has that moody look to it. Besides, brown is one of the main colors, so I needed to start building that up right away. But in a more colorful painting, I wouldn't have. To get a smooth and realistic result, I make what I call creamy mixes of paint. They're not terribly watery, as we know the watercolors will dry really light. They're not thick with pigment either. This ensures that colors flow easily on my initial layer and that they look light, since they have a lot of water in them. And it's also great to make sure they stay vibrant enough that we don't need to add many layers on top. In a second layer, once the first has dried completely, I'll start working with the same mixes, except I add some pigment in them, to make them a bit thicker, so colors show better. This is where our mid-tones get placed. Remember many people will stop here, but it's not enough to build up contrast. That's why in the second layer, you can also start leveraging color mixing to mix darker versions of some of your colors and start placing shadows on the painting. Here, I increased the intensity in the dark tones all around the painting and started painting some trees in the background. Be careful not to cover up everything you did in the first layer. We want our light tones to stand out in places. The light tones stay most visible in the center in my painting, since I wanted the edges to look dark. That is of course up to you to decide how you want to do it. For example, I started from this reference photo I found on Unsplash and made it more mysterious using very light and very dark values. So values are not only important for realism, but also to create a certain mood in your painting. In a third layer, it's time to work mostly on making those shadows pop by placing dark tones. Or really wet the whole sheet again here. Just work on specific areas and with my darkest and thickest mixes of paint. A thin and precise paintbrush will be helpful here to get smaller areas to pop, to finish the painting nicely. In this painting's third layer, I added dark branches. I also started adding foliage to add a bit of color and brighten up the piece. There is one thing I didn't mention, you can do something more to make your watercolors look more realistic and pop up the page. I do it all the time in my third layer. I add strong highlights with white gouache. It's something I love to do because unlike loose painting with realistic watercolor, we have the advantage we don't need to rush and we can also fix and improve pretty much everything. 
white gouache is my favorite way to add highlights because it's like watercolor. You can either add water to make it look lighter, you can use it pure or almost pure for maximum highlights to pop even more next to your light tones of watercolor. This technique helps us in creating even more values in our painting. I hardly ever do a fourth layer, except if I think I need it, then I go for it. And it was the case here as I felt I should make those edges even darker. I wet everything once more and I added more brown and black paints. For this to be effective, I added even more black to the brown paint, so that mix was more black than brown at this point. Remember we need to work from light to dark which means the more I paint, the darker the paints should be. More shadows means a few more highlights to balance the whole thing and make the main subject pop. I added more white gouache, and because it's such a nice way to finish a painting, I also mixed some to my foliage color, yellow, to make the colorful parts pop more. I used to feel crippled when I heard you should use the white of the paper and watercolor, I think that's great for loose styles, but for us realism fans, why on earth limit ourselves when we have great tools like white gouache to beautify a painting? I thought I needed more branches as highlights so I refined the painting later with more gouache and then I added orange, mixed the white gouache to add more color. You end up with a dark and mysterious painting with magical highlights and beautiful autumn foliage. I'm a huge advocate for realistic watercolor, you can really do anything you like. If you thought this video was interesting, I invite you to watch this one for the general steps that go into painting realistic watercolor when you know little about the medium. Don't forget to like, comment, or share this video to help it in the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time!